One of the hardest things about UI browser automation testing is figuring out why something failed. Now we've talked about the Playwright debugger, we've talked about taking screenshots and saving recordings, but Playwright has one other trick up its sleeve. Let's mash on that. Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of the ASP NetMonsys. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at the Trace Viewer, uh, which as far as I know is a GUI tool that helps exploring recorded playwright traces after a script is run. <laughs> How did you, you know that, Simon? I, f I feel That's like you, you might already know what's going on here, Simon. <laughs> uh, I know that sentence, but uh, in West Wing style, what are the next 10 words? I don't know. All right. So I, I don't know. As we have been doing lately, I am running some automated tests against this two weeks ready application here that I'm just running locally. I already have the local dev server running on port 8080. And I have this test here that does some login. So I can run that test here, just doing NPX playwright test. And that will do its thing. It'll, it'll run it headless here. Can't really see what's happening. Um, and it, it should succeed, hopefully. I don't have a scenario here to actually go through a failing workflow, but I do want to show just how easy it is to enable this tracing and how powerful this trace viewer is. So I thought it was pretty cool when I was playing with it yesterday. Okay, so that's passed. Let's imagine now that I do have some kind of problem there and I want to inspect what's, take a look at what's happening. Um, the only change I need to make to my test here is that I also need to pass in the context. Mm -hmm. So previously I was only passing in the the uh, page there, but I also need to pass in the browser context. And then what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to start the trace. So I'm going to say await context.tracing.start. Mm. And then I can give it some options here. So I can, I can give it a name if I want it. I can tell it to include the snapshots. I definitely want those. And screenshots, I definitely want those too, so that I can visually see what's, what's happening here. And then Can I ask I just, what a snapshot is, or is that going to ruin the surprise? Uh, you'll see what they are. Okay. So it's a snapshot, it snapshot of everything that happened with that action, uh, with every action along the way here, like the clicks and the button, and the key presses, uh, and page navigations. So now we just do our test like we always did, and down at the bottom, when I'm done. I'm just going to say wait. Context dot tracing dot stop. And then I'm going to tell it where to save my file. So I'm going to save it in a file called login-trace.zip. Oh, I need to give it the path. So that's, that should be it. I should be able to come back here now and run my test again. Waiting. Anybody got any nine second long jokes to tell? Mm, I do not. Yeah, all well, my jokes are like 11 seconds. That's mm -hmm. no good. <laughs> so obviously there's gonna be some extra spin up time because there's there's, a, there's more going on here, right? Extra well, it took an extra, an extra second, right? Okay, yeah. there we go. All right, so there's my login trace.zip. And what we do to view that now is we do NPX playwright show trace, and then I just give it the name of the file. That's going to pop open the trace viewer for me. Da, da, da. Oh, so this is like a whole standalone application thing, huh? It totally is, yeah. I assume it's built in a browser uh, somewhere, but I get a timeline up top where I can see everything that happened. I can hover over and kind of see the how the page changed over the, the lifetime of the test. And the really cool thing is I can click on these actions and I can see those snapshots. So I can see the action. Uh, this was just go to page. Here's what it looked like before and here's what it looked like after. And uh, the, it's more interesting when it's something like button clicks. So before I click the button, it shows me where I'm clicking with the little red dot, uh, what it was like before, what it was like when the action happened and what happened after. So it was in the middle of a page transition after, so it hadn't downloaded everything yet but we had the the wait in place that told it to wait until we got to, until everything was ready there um, and then eventually we go to that next piece and we get those snapshots for for every aspect of it 
with each of those snapshots, we can see the console logs. Uh, we can see the thing that we did within Playwright. So uh, the page click and what selector was used and uh, a log of what Playwright was doing. We also see any network requests that were made, which is pretty cool. And uh, we can click to view the source and it shows up where we were in our test as we were executing that. Uh, super powerful, I think, in terms of being able to, like, you could easily enable this for your, uh, like your continuous integration where you're running these tests on a build server. And if there's a failure, save those traces out and upload them as part of your an artifact from your build and then you can go and inspect them later and see exactly where the failure was you know even like even as part of the development process sometimes you've got things that are tricky to set up in terms of um, transition from one state to the next and you're getting those network calls and there's console output and whatnot um, this is almost like like, I mean, it's got the visual state transitions captured as well, but it also has like the F12 browser tools captured in a way, yeah. right? That's awesome, yeah. Yeah, there's just so many things here, like clicking on that button, um, example, but uh, being able to see all the, the network requests that happened when I went right. to the page, right? Yeah. Is, is really cool to have that all captured and it shows me all of that information and what the actual response was and everything the whole and i would suspect not just when you navigate to the page but on each of the steps any of the um like since last step recorded network transition yeah there's another one there with the uh, the post going out so yeah. hmm pretty cool hey eh? i thought so yeah i like it ah yeah for sure so i'm excited to play play around more with this but um, really, really pleased with what I'm seeing so far. I think this is super powerful. For sure. That is excellent stuff. Thanks for sharing that with us, Dave. You? Okay. I do, I do have a, a joke. <laughs> oh, okay. 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 And it actually, it, it occurred to me because he showed me when, because it, it came to me when you clicked on one of those and it showed you the, the before and the, the current and then the, the after, right? And, um, so, so here it is. Uh, the past, the present, and the future all walked into a bar. It got very tense. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I think we can all appreciate that this recording is now over. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so thanks, everybody, for joining us. And uh, remember to come back next week for more fabulous jokes. We'll see everybody then. Mash on that subscribe button. Don't forget to comment. <laughs>